Welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demonstration called the Stirling engine. The Stirling engine is a very famous engine and I'll explain a little bit about the workings of it. You can do a lot more research and reading into it and I'm going to show you a little model of the Stirling engine and see how it, is, uh, how it functions. So when I read the Wikipedia, maybe a couple sentences from there, you can see what it is. A Stirling engine is a heat engine that operates by cyclic compression and expansion of air or other gas called the working fluid, right? at different temperatures such that there's a net conversion of heat energy to mechanical work so pretty much it's basically a form of a heat engine right you're putting in external heat and then you're going from a hot chamber to a cold chamber you're exchanging heat between two chambers and thereby doing work it says more specifically the Stirling engine is a closed cycle regenerative heat engine with a permanently gaseous working flow Closed cycle in this context means a thermodynamic system in which the working fluid is permanently contained within the system. So that means the fluid, in this case is the gas, is maintained in the system. You don't release the gases and let new gas come in. Okay? The, the engine in the car, the auto cycle, new gas is always coming in and then you're expelling the old gas. So it's making a cycle. But here, it's always staying in the system. Okay? So it says... Um, and then the other word that is important is regenerative. It says regenerative describes the use of a specific type of internal heat exchanger and thermal store known as the regenerator. The inclusion of a regenerator differentiates the Stirling engine from other closed hot air engines. Okay, so the regenerator. So one model of the heat engine that is used, the Stirling engine, is called the alpha type where there's two pistons. So they draw a picture like this, like this, and then you have, uh, this one goes like this, then it's connected to like that, then you have the crankshaft, it's turning. So imagine this is the, the piston right here. So look what it says. Originally conceived in 1816 as an industrial prime mover to rival the steam engine, its practical use was largely confined to low-power domestic applications for over a century. Stirling engines have a high efficiency compared to steam engines, being able to reach 50% efficiency. So that's really, really high. They are also capable of quiet operation and can use almost any heat source. The heat energy source is generated external to the Stirling engine. So you need some kind of external heat source pouring in heat into the system. It says rather by, it says uh, the heat energy source is generated external to the st uh, Stirling engine rather than by internal combustion as with the auto cycle or diesel cycle. So the auto or diesel cycle, it's internal combustion that's generating the source of heat. This one is using an external heat source, right? Expansion cylinder, expansion cylinder, and it's kept hot by a heat source, right? Expansion cylinder, and then this one is called the compression cylinder. Compression cylinder. And then the compression cylinder is cooled. Okay, so hot, cool, hot, cold. Okay, so then it says the passage between the two cylinders contains the regenerator. So this is how you regenerate the energy from the hot to the cold. The gas is, has to flow from one to the other. So this is the regenerator. Okay, so the PV diagram for the um, Stirling engine looks like this. You got, uh, you start over here with the pressure and volume. And then you go down, um, it says the first step is isothermal, this is number one. So the isothermal expansion, it says the expansion space and associated heat exchanger are maintained at constant high temperature and the gas undergoes near isothermal expansion absorbing heat from the hot source. So you see, heat is coming in, right here, Q hot, right? Then you have number two, constant volume, known as isovolumetric or isochoric, constant volume heat removal. So you're basically going down. So heat is now coming out. You see? 
So we'll do this in a color of blue. Okay. Constant volume heat removal, Q out. Okay. So then you're going to have another one, uh, isothermal compression. The compression space and associated heat exchanger are maintained at constant low temperature, so the gas undergoes near isothermal compression, rejecting heat to the cold sink. So then you go over here. Okay. So then you're going to have here what? Uh, this is isothermal. This is step two. This is a step three. This is also isothermal uh, compression. So the heat uh, is going out. Okay. And then the step four is constant volume known as isovolumetric or isochoric heat addition. So you're heating, adding heat twice. Okay. So then you're going to go back up. So you're going to have here Q hot, okay? You're going to pour heat twice, and then you're going to expel heat twice, okay? So it says the gas, the gas passes back through the regenerator where it recovers much of the heat, you see? So the gas passes back through the regenerator, it recovers much of the heat transferred in process two, heating up on its way to the expansion space. So then it's going back to expansion, and then this is the expansion cylinder, right? What would be the efficiency equation for this? Okay, so let's just assume for the sake of argument that the initial volume is V initial, and the initial pressure is P initial, then you double the volume isothermally, double the volume. Okay, then you go down from there, so let's say whatever the pressure here is, you go down to half that pressure. I'm just going to make it simple. Whatever this final pressure is, then you go down half that pressure, half the pressure. Then you're going to go back up isothermally. Then from there, go back. So let's calculate what the, the, the efficiency of this heat engine would be Okay, in this ideal case. Okay, so... Um, so we have here isothermal, if the final volume PV is equal to a constant in isothermal, so P initial, V initial equals P final, V final. If the final volume is twice the initial volume, what, what's the final pressure? So P initial, V initial, P final, twice the V initial, right? So then the V initial, V initial cancel, P final is half of P initial. So that means the final uh, pressure here would be half of the initial pressure, right? So half of the initial pressure, okay? So then if I go down isovolumically to a half of that, so then I'm gonna be now quarter of P initial, right? So I went down half of the half to a quarter, then what's gonna be this pressure here? Okay, now if I go back to V initial, what's gonna happen to the pressure? If I decrease the volume by a half, the pressure is going to double, so then I'm going to go back up to here. So it basically looks like this. It goes like this all the way to the same pressure, because I'm going half the volume, I'm going to double the pressure, and then when I double this pressure, I'm going to get back to half P initial, right? Like this, this is like this, right? So now let's find the uh, area under this graph, because what's going to happen, the efficiency of a Stirling engine is going to be 100% times work out over the heat in. The heat in is coming in here and here, right? Q in. In other words, the efficiency of an engine is how much work it does divided by how much heat you put into it, right? Uh, so you have your... Uh, What's the work that it does in isothermal uh, expansion? So the work it does is equal to NRT uh, LN V final over V initial. So you can look at my videos on isothermal and the work that uh, is done in isothermal expansion. So you can see that the work that it does is NRT uh, LN V final over V initial, right?
Now, uh, nRT is equal to, since PB is equal to nRT, right? So uh, nRT is just equal to P initial V initial, right? So we have your work is equal to P initial V initial, and then since we assume the final volume is twice the initial volume is ln of 2. So that's the work that that the gas did in the in this stage when it went from here to here. It's the area under the whole graph. Now, how much heat came in? We have from the first law of thermodynamics, uh, heat in is equal to work plus change in internal energy, right? But since this is isothermal, there is no change in internal energy, so the heat coming in is equal to the work that the gas is doing in stage one. So this is stage one. So that means the heat coming in is equal to P initial, V initial, ln of two, right? So it's just equal to the same, the same thing as the work, okay? So how about stage two? In stage two, the gas is doing no work and the, there's no heat, uh, the, the heat is just being expelled, okay? So we're not gonna count the heat expelled. So then we go back here. What, how about the work that the gas is doing going back this way, right? So work in stage three. So then it's just gonna be uh, negative. It's gonna be the pressure here, quarter, we find, um, so instead of P initial, V initial, it's gonna be quarter P initial, quarter P initial, and then your V initial is gonna be two V initial, right? Times two V initial. Or I can do uh, V initial times a half P initial. You see this one times, so this one times this one, this one times this one, it's gonna be half P initial V initial, or this times this one, which is gonna be half P initial V initial, right? Times ln of, two again. So the work that it does is negative. Why? Because it's going backwards. You're doing work on the gas by compressing the gas. So it's going backwards. So then it's going to be what? Uh, negative P initial V initial divided by two ln of two. Okay. And then going back P4, um, going back in the fourth stage, it, it does no work. So the total work done by the gas is what? The total work done, work total, is equal to P initial V initial ln of 2 minus P initial V initial ln of 2 over 2. Okay? So then it's going to be P initial V initial over 2 ln of 2. P initial V initial over 2 ln of 2. Okay, so that's the total work that the gas does. How about how much heat comes in? Well, how much heat comes in? Over here, Q in, we said it's equal to the work done. So that's equal to P initial, V initial, ln of two. Now, how much heat comes in in stage four? We don't care how much heat you dump over here, here and here. We just care how much heat comes in in stage four. You see? So stage four, what's the heat that comes in? So we say Q in, equals W plus delta E, but the gas is doing no work in stage four. Okay, so all we need to do is delta E. So I assume that the gas that we have in there is diatomic, so we can use five halves N R delta T, right? So if it was monatomic, we would do three halves N R delta T. If it was a polyatomic, we would do seven halves N R delta T. So let's just say the gas is uh, diatomic, so we're gonna use five halves N R delta T. Easier way to do this, N R delta T, since this stage volume is constant, right? So if you look over here, uh, N R delta T is just delta P B times n r delta t, right? If you take the derivative of both sides, the volume is not changing from here to here, so the volume is staying the same, the, only the pressure is changing. So delta pb is equal to n r delta t, so we're just gonna say q in four, in stage four is gonna be five halves n r delta t, is gonna be n r delta t, so it's just gonna be five half b delta p, right? So then uh, V delta P, delta P is gonna be what? It's going from half P initial to P initial, so the delta P is half P initial, right? So then it's gonna be five has V, and then the delta P is gonna be half P initial, okay? 
So then it's going to be what? Uh, Q, the heat coming in stage 4, it's going to be 5 fourths, 5 fourths P initial, V initial. So now let's do the efficiency. Okay? So the efficiency, 100% times the work output, work output is P initial, V initial, LN of 2 over 2, divided by the heat coming in, which is going to be P initial, V initial, LN of 2, plus P initial, V initial, 5 fourths. So that's going to be 1.25, 1.25 P initial, V initial. Okay, so then you're going to see what happens. The P initial, V initial doesn't matter. Okay, so you're going to have efficiency of that Stirling engine, LN of 2 divided by 2 over LN of 2 plus 1.25. So if I want to write it a little simpler, I would just do LN of 2 over, and then the 2 I would go in here, so it will be 2 LN of 2 plus 2.5. Okay, that's about 18% efficient. 18% efficient. But you, when I read the, uh, the the Wikipedia page, it said they could be up to 50% efficient. So of course, it all depends on the ratio of the, the vinyl volume, the ratio of the pressure, and uh, and that's it. So those those uh, final volume and final pressure, and that will change the efficiency. So you can manipulate this to where the efficiency can be as high as 50%. So let me show you the one that I have looks like this okay so you can see here this is one of the pistons this is one the one where the fire will be going in you see here there's a little bit of a demo uh, experiment so the, this uh, this is going to be the source of fire this is going to be the exp expansion chamber right so when I start the volume here low this is the as low as it is so very very tiny amount here right so then you can see here the maximum volume. So you can see the maximum volume is a lot more than twice the initial volume, right? So it goes like this. This is a very, very small amount. And then this is the maximum expansion. So that's going to be the V final. So the V final is a, quite a lot bigger than V initial, maybe four times uh, V initial, okay? Maybe uh, six times V initial. So when I assume two, that was just a certain value, okay? Then. You can see here that this one is doing the opposite of whatever that's doing. So the way that the, the arms of the shaft work here, this one goes here, and this one is over here. So they're basically 90 degrees off. This one is uh, at the end, this one is at the top. So they're kind of out of phase by 90 degrees, doing the opposite thing. Basically, it's like a cosine function and a sine function. Think of it that way. The expansion chamber, let's say, is a sine function, and the, uh, the compression chamber is a cosine function. They're off by pi over 2 radians, right? So then, when I, uh, the first thing that's going to happen, when I turn on the heat, right, stage uh, 1, it's going to start expanding. Right here, this is the beginning of stage 1. Expansion. You see? There it is. That's stage 1 for you. Let's show that again. Stage 1. Okay? The gas expanded. Then stage 2 is isovolumic. So, for a while, the volume is not changing a lot. You see, I'm turning this, but the volume is not changing a lot. Right about there, okay? So turn right there. So you see, it? this one is here, and then all the way to here, the volume stays the same. From there to there, volume stays the same. So that's stage two. The volume of the other one is staying the same too. Stage two, right, going down. Then stage three, the volume is compressing. And then stage four, turn, 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 volume stays the same. So you see, there's about an uh, angle from here to here where it stays the same, and then from here to here where it stays the same. Let's show that again. Expansion, then stays the same. Stage two. Then goes like that, stage three, and then from here to here, you see? A little bit from here to here. From here to here, stays the same. And then stage one begins again. See, and then the opposite, this is doing the opposite, you see? 
You can see there, this is the compression chamber right here. See, it's also going up and down, but out of phase by 90 degrees. See, gas is expanding, cooling, then compressing, this is warming. And then they're exchanging the heat with each other this way. So that's the regenerator, right? They have to be able to exchange heat with each other. So it's all internal. Everything is happening internal right here. You can see here, as I'm getting going, the fire is going. Okay. At first, when the fire was initially going, the gas was not really hot. So it kept stopping. The friction of the axle here would make it stop. The gas has to reach a certain temperature in order for the, it continue to, to go, right? Nice. The piston there continues to go back and forth. It's kind of slowing down. No, it keeps going. See, if I remove the source of fire, see, you need an external heat source, right? Okay. Nice. The, mod the wonders of modern technology, right? How we use the laws of physics and thermodynamics and we design engines for our benefit, right? Beautiful, amazing. So this Sterling engine is one type of a really wonderful engine, it uses a certain particular cycle, but there are other engines, diesel engine, auto cycle, car no engine, and different kinds of engines that utilize different kinds of cycles, okay? So you can read up a little bit more about this and learn more detail. Thank you very much.